Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to No Hope First. My name is Norm Kelsey. I'm the lay leader here, and we welcome you on this beautiful All Saints Sunday. I'm now going to turn things over to our music director and worship leader, Kelsey Pack. Good morning. All right, everyone, if you would take out your red hymnals and open to number 377. We're going to sing, It is well with my soul. And if you would stand with me in body or in spirit as we worship together. Our scripture today is 1 Kings chapter 19, verses 9 through 15. 
There he went into a cave and spent the night, and the word of the Lord came to him. What are you doing here, Elijah? He replied, I have been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, torn down your altars, and put your prophets to death with the sword. I am the only one left, and now they're trying to kill me too. The Lord said, Go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake came a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came a gentle whisper. When Elijah heard it, he pulled his cloak over his face and went out and stood at the mouth of the cave. Then a voice said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? He replied, I have been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, torn down your altars, and put your prophets to death with the sword. I am the only one left, and now they're trying to kill me too. The Lord said to him, Go back the way you came and go to the desert of Damascus. When you get there, anoint Hazel, Cain over Aram. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Before we dig into this week's Bible story, I want to say how blessed I am to be back here in the NoHo community. I was gone for a week in Paris, for those of you who did not know that. Thankful that Pastor Christian filled in. It was the most wonderful, perfect trip with nine of my friends uh, that I've been friends with since I was 12 years old. And so we spent a week together in Paris. And yet how amazing to come back into this church family in a week that, oh my goodness, was this campus alive. So thank you to those who were a part of Trunk or Treat on Monday as I was feeling jet lag. It kept me awake because there was no way I was going to fall asleep during Trunk or Treat. But to see how many people were there and so many Wesley students that were like, hi, Pastor Jamie, and it was just so exciting to see them there. and. People of all different generations here in our church really bringing this spirit of festivity to our community. And then this past weekend, yesterday, some of you were here on the campus, some of you were not, but oh my goodness, did we have a few people here on this campus, literally hundreds. Phil was joking with me that I said my prayer was that our campus would be more used, and oh wow, it was. There was a school, a middle school open house happening. We shared our space with the California Rangers, this equestrian, equestrian group that got to use our campus. There was a wedding here in the sanctuary, and we had our amazing market which was just fantastic. And I've already enjoyed some jam this morning that I bought and the pottery plates that Carrie had, we used those at dinner last night. I ate all the, almost all the chocolate balls from Kathy Ellis I was supposed to save for my husband. <laughs> so fortunately, he doesn't know that happened. Uh, it's his favorite dessert. Uh, just to see the activity on this campus, I can't tell you how heartwarming it was, how excited it made me to be back here, how much I really want to see our faith community grow. Because though I absolutely loved, loved the trip that I had to Paris with my friends, I thought a lot about the state of the church in the world. And of course, what I do when I travel is I just ask people about their faith and church and Jesus and all of that. I ended up talking to two young women. One of them was a guy for a day that we tasted our way on a walking food tour through Paris. Another was a guy when we biked all around Versailles. Both of these women were in their 20s. 
They shared with me that today in France, 5% of the population goes to worship. 5%. And they didn't have much connection to church. And we ended up having a great conversation. I actually told them about this church. Both of them said, I think I would like to go to that kind of church. And it just disheartened me and convicted me that if we do not tend to the life of the church in our midst, that sadly, because this is what's happened in many places in France, that we could end up selling tickets to a museum. That you walk in some churches today and you're selling a ticket to a museum. And that breaks my heart to think that that's what this sanctuary could become. We don't want it to become that. You have these little cards in your bulletins today that you might think, well, oh gee, it slipped out and now I have to pick it up on the floor. But instead of being like, oh, gee, I have to pick this up, stick it in your bag, your purse, your pocket, invite someone to come. Because in a broken and hurting world, I still think that Jesus and the community of faith that follow in the way of loving like Jesus is the best hope for the world. And we all have to work in making that happen. And then to be able to come back after a week away and seeing the state of the church in France and then seeing our church alive this week and then today is All Saints Sunday, it really truly gives me goosebumps. When it's time for communion, you'll be invited to come up to two altar rails. So if you're on this side, you'll come up and kneel if you're able or stand. If you're on this side, you'll come up to this altar rail, kneel if you can or stand. And then after you take Holy Communion, you can go to one of either stations and light one candle for the people in your life who have gone before you. All Saints Sunday is a day we remember those who are now in heaven and who have shared life with us. Now, what I did at these tables, I actually have old church bulletins and pictures sitting at those tables. There are actually photos from 1960s. You're not supposed to sit and look at the bulletins when you come up, but if afterwards you want to, you will see many past pastors, including Pastor Joey, um, they are in those bulletins. So when you come forward for communion and you come forward to light candles, I want you to be aware that all those saints who have gone before us, they are with us in communion. They are with us when we light those candles. And that we are building on the shoulders of giants. These are people who loved Jesus and loved the church and believed in the church. And so I hope that we can draw some strength from those saints as we go forth and think we want to be those people. I also want to make a special note to hold in prayer Lynn Yoshizimu, whose husband Rich just passed away on Friday. And when you come forth, just that you have a heart full of prayer um, for her. So let us, oh, I'll say one more thing. That's why I'm holding it. In the middle is actually a prayer for All Saints Sunday and a place for you to write a prayer or a memory of someone that you have loved. So either before or after you take communion, if you want to sit in your pew as quiet reflective time and read the prayer, write a prayer you can. Or maybe it's something you'd like to use in this week ahead to remember um, those saints. So let us pray. God, I thank you that as we gather for worship today, it's not just us, the people that we see behind us and beside us and in front of us in these pews. But that the saints of yesterday are somehow mysteriously with us. And that most importantly, God, you are here with us. And you weave together the lives of those who have gone before with the lives of those who are here now. 
with all of those who will come in the future. And God, through all of these centuries, we have built our faith on the firm foundation of Jesus and on these stories of scripture, that there are stories from ancient of days that are still true for us in this moment and place. And so God, I pray that you bless every word spoken and every word heard so that in the end, we hear your word. We say this in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. So this autumn, as we think of homecomings and celebrations around tables, it's those times where people share stories. So we've been talking about all these stories in the Old Testament that are really part of our stories and getting to know our faith, our faith family tree, and there's still stories that speak to us today. So we have talked a little bit about Moses and how Moses was called by God who heard the cry of a people enslaved to free them. And as he leads them through the wilderness and leads them to freedom, then Moses helps them to live in right rhythm with God and with each other as he gets those Ten Commandments on the mountain. And then we talked about David, who takes those commandments that have been away for a long time in a different place, and he brings them to the holy city, and he's so excited to have those words of God back in the midst of the people that he dances undignified, uh, dances like crazy. And so the last Sunday I was with you, we were talking about dancing undignified, which is very different than All Saints Sunday, which is more about this sense of being somber. And it's a day where I wear my robe because it's sort of one of these high, holy, reflective days in the life of the church. Now, all of these stories are interweaven together because it really leads to the story of Elijah. Now, Elijah is very excited for the Lord. He also is a grumbler and a complainer. He has been called as a prophet to speak the word of God to a people who do not necessarily want to listen. And he is trying really hard to be faithful to preaching God's word, sharing with others, and he is in many ways, overwhelmed and overworked. He is in a challenging time because as he is trying to preach the truth of God, there is what is arguably in the Bible the most wicked king and queen of the time are ruling. Like if you look at all the biblical kings and queens, these two are kind of listed as the worst. Ahab and Jezebel. You heard that name, Jezebel? It used to be, there would be a phrase, like back in the day, I haven't heard it currently, that if somebody told you you were a Jezebel, that was not nice. You were wicked and you were mean. So Elijah is dealing with this king and, and queen, very, very wicked, not very good things happening in the land, and he's trying to speak God's truth and a better way of life. Jezebel actually wants him beheaded, which I learned in French history, there's a lot of beheading, um, not good. So this is a scary, scary time. So Elijah's trying to, to preach this word in a hard time. He's getting very tired and very overwhelmed. And so he goes to this mountain. Now it's the same mountain that Moses received those 10 commandments. Moses heard God on that mountain. And so now Elijah is on that mountain trying to hear a word from God. As he's up there, there's a lot of noises. There is an earthquake, and there is strong wind, and there is blazing fire. Loud, big noises. But as the story goes, God is not in any of those loud noises. At the end, all of a sudden, there is this sound that comes, and God is in that quiet sound. 
It's translated many different ways. Sometimes, I believe in the Bibles in your pews, it says that there was a sound of sheer silence. Other translations say it was a low whisper. Other translations say it was a gentle whisper. Some say a soft and gentle whisper. And other translations say a still, small voice. In the Hebrew, the original language of the Old Testament, it really isn't the easiest word to translate. Because there is this sense that there is a quiet, not like the airplane going over our head right now, there is a quiet, yet in the quiet there's a voice. You do hear the voice of God, even though it's silent. And that's sort of hard to grasp and understand. There's a mystery in that silence, yet God is speaking. And it's not until Elijah is able to get to that point of sheer silence, gentle silence, a quiet whisper, that he is able to hear God speak in his life speak right into what he most needs to hear in his own time and place. So I want you to imagine for a minute about what your days look like right now. Maybe you, in your own way, are feeling a lot of stress, a lot of being overwhelmed, and you have been very busy and zealous for the Lord, or very busy in your work, very busy in taking care of your health or somebody else's health, that you have been very, very, very busy and going and going and going and going, because that's Elijah's story. And now finally he is taking a little bit of a break. He is taking a pause and it is being overwhelmed in the busyness of what he's doing but also the busyness of his mind, worrying and grappling with all these things, he spends some time in quiet. And how often we need that too. We are so busy with different things that might be those tasks on our to-do calendar. And I think that many of us could admit that we busy our minds with worry, we busy our minds with stress, and we just keep going on that level. And maybe what we really need to do is take a little break to be in the silence. And that when we open ourselves up to the silence, we might just hear God speaking. If you have studied the science of silence at all, it is pretty amazing. And I've said many times that I think the study of science helps us in the discovery of God because we learn how God does things. In the, the science of silence, when you are actually quiet, when you are shutting off the TV and the radio and you're working at trying to shut off maybe your constant worry or negative self-talk in there and you can just be quiet it actually brings healing to your brain cells. They've also done studies on mice that in the hippocampus, when you spend time in silence, it helps you to actually reconnect and form memories and sensory feelings. Silence physically helps us. It can help with our heart rate, helps with our thinking. And yet silence can also be really scary. I know I've had stretches in my life where I have kept music going or kept the radio going, kept the TV going, not because I really liked what I was listening to, but because I was scared that if it got too quiet, I might have feelings that popped up that I didn't want to think about or deal with. And yet, we are invited into the silence because sometimes it's only in those moments 
that God can really speak to us and help us and bring healing to us. I think, in particular, this really connects with All Saints Sunday because in All Saints Sunday, there is a grief that is in that day because we think of loss of people that we have so loved and who are no longer with us. And that sometimes what we most need to do to deal with our grief and trauma and hurt is actually spend some time in the quiet with God, where that still small voice of God can whisper healing to us, can whisper love, can whisper comfort, can whisper hope, that that's so important, that we can't deal with our grief if we're constantly making and putting ourselves in noise, that we have to be able to be quiet, that in the still small silence, God really truly can speak to us. If we can simply let ourselves sit and breathe and open up some space that in a mysterious way God does speak into our hearts. In my Celtic Daily Prayer book, I love that each and every day is the same opening reading and then there is a reading for each day of the month so you read it 12 times a year and then there's a different daily reading for a whole two years. Now, on the second day of every single month, there is a reminder about being silent. And I love this reminder. I need this reminder. As I read this, I want you to imagine this is coming from God speaking to you. So it's God's invitation to enter the silence. It says this, I have brought you to this place. Drink in the silence, the still small voice, the gentle whisper. Seek solitude. Listen to the silence. It will teach you. It will build strength. Let others share it with you, because you can even be still and silent in the midst of community. It is little to be found elsewhere. Silence will speak more to you in a day than the world of voices can teach you in a lifetime. Find silence, find solitude, and having discovered her riches, find them in your heart. And so as we close in prayer, I'm going to invite you into a time of silence that will have music. Kelsey will be playing some music for a couple minutes in the background, but no words. I just want you to soak in the presence of God who is meeting us here and see perhaps if there's a still small voice of love that speaks to you. So let us pray. God, I thank you that you love us so much that you call each of us by name, and that you long to speak to us in a gentle whisper, that you long us to find times to be still, because you really want to be with us. And so help calm our hearts right now so they can be open to hearing your love. We say this in your name, amen.
Yeah, so on your insert today, if you open it up fully, you'll see the lyrics to the song, It Is Well. And you might be thinking to yourself, didn't we already sing that? We did. This morning we opened with the hymn, It Is Well. But what I love about the song we're about to sing now is that it's a contemporary version inspired by the hymn. And just the lyrics, and it has a little bit of the hymn in it, the way that it takes the original hymn and spins it in a new way is so powerful and so important. And I wanted to sing both in the same service because I think it's so important to have both traditional hymns and contemporary worship in the same service. And I wanted you to be able to see the differences between the two, but also enjoy both. So if you would stand with me in body or in spirit, let's close the worship together.
Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and all God's children said, Amen. Amen.